popular topic. A very good morning, respected judge, faculty, and my fellow students. I am Fiona Fernandez of Grade 11, studying in St. Xavier's High Secondary. I'm going to speak on the topic, freedom of speech and expression. A people which is able to say everything becomes able to do everything. Is wisely quoted by the famous French emperor and leader Napoleon Bonaparte. Just as life is a free gift from God, so is speech and expression. Therefore, every person has the right to speak or express what he thinks right, provided that it is done in an appropriate or acceptable manner. Freedom of speech and expression is a natural right which a human being acquires at birth. It is therefore the most basic of all the freedoms granted to the citizens of India. The right includes the freedom to hold expressions without interference and to seek and receive and impart information and ideas on any topic regardless of frontiers. The people of India declared in the preamble of the constitution which they gave to themselves their resolve to secure to all the citizens freedom of thought and expression. This resolve is reflected in Article 19.1a of the constitution. However, according to Article 19.2, the state may make a law imposing reasonable restrictions on this law, on this freedom, in the interests of the security of the state, friendly relations with foreign countries, public order, decency or morality, contempt of court, defamation, integrity of India and sovereignty. The question that we should be asking ourselves is, how much freedom do we actually have? For example, the Facebook post by a girl named Shaheen Talahad against Bal Takare stating that people like Takare are born and die daily and then why should we observe a shutdown? That is, she was opposing the shutdown of the city. Immediately, Shiv Sena ordered the police to get the girl and her friend who shared the post arrested. And the police compiled arresting the two girls under section 295A and 5052 and of course the IT Act. 2008. It was later realized that the police had charged them under the wrong sections. The girls were later released a few days later, but due to, it was due to the widespread protest and filings of petitions in the court. Asim Trivedi, an Indian political cartoonist, had his website suspended by the crime branch Mumbai and charges were brought against him under the state emblem of India Act. 2005. It was later realized that because of the Markande Pukachu, a chairman justice of the Press Council of India, who was a former judge of the Supreme Court, defended him saying that he did nothing illegal. All these instances and many more put a question mark on the freedom of expression and speech. Therefore, freedom of expression and speech to receive a generous support from all those who believe in the participation of people in the administration of a country. To sum up, the fundamental principle involved here is the freedom to express. Therefore, every free citizen has a right to express oneself and therefore, it is this right that we should exercise with circumspection and care must be taken not to trench on the rights of others or to jeopardize public interest. However, having said all this, I am proud that the Indian constitution gives us the freedom of expression and speech in comparison to other countries where the word freedom itself is a dream. Thank you. Thank you, Fiona. Fiona also raised uh, one important issue. Most of the time, as a uh, layman, we're not aware of legal terms and uh, all the acts. So, uh, if we are in trouble or if someone is arrested under certain sections and this and that, it's it's always uh, good to you know uh, know whether what's happening is right or not, whether we are uh, what we are reading or what we are. God forbid, none of you fall in trouble. But if you all do, it's always correct to cross. It's always right to cross check it.
Next participant is Prajwal Desai from Worship and High Secondary. Prajwal's topic is Perils of Social Media. Friends, although we are here to talk about the perils of social media, I'm sure most of us present here will surely be on some of the other social networking sites. Why are we so reliant on these sites? Why are these sites become so important for us in our daily life? Good afternoon to one and all present here. I'm Prajwal Desai, student from Muslim and High Secondary, now before you to speak a few words on the topic, Perils of Social Media. Social networking basically means connecting people with different technological means, Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, Hive, Snapchat, Skype, etc. are all a part of social media. Each and every one present here very well know the disadvantages of social media. But yet, we think we can't live without it, right? But friends, it's high time now to face the danger with the unwilling to look at. Because maybe that's the only way we can have an experience on life a healthy run. Anita Cruz, a 36-year-old lady with a side impact, fell in South End, Goa, was arrested by the Goan police for duping the Goan and Ara youth at the tune of 5 lakhs. She used to post as a 21-year-old lady on Facebook claiming that she urgently required money for her mother's treatment. She was a housewife who had five paid for rights on Facebook. She befriended her own boys working abroad, spoke sweetly to them, got close to them and then she would suddenly demand for money for her mother's treatment. Of course, some boys got trapped in the street boys and they were sent for money. In our other part, a special group of women first in the prosecution racket which was carried out by social media apps that the WhatsApp that had international list of followers. The official snap attacked the Tisha along with high profile followers. These are the chunks of few pages to mention about. But if we do a list, the list will go on and on, so the case numbers will never end. Social media has created a great opportunity for the criminals. <coughs> According to various studies and surveys, 81% of internet initiated crimes include social media sites like Facebook and Twitter. 71% of teen girls and 67% of teen boys have admitted that they have sent sexually suggested content and no photos to different people. The largest group of all consumers on internet are the students from 12 to 17 age, which comprises of teenagers. In 2004, there were around 3,433 child abuse domains online and in 2006, the number went up to 10,636. Every day, around 1,16,000 child pornography requests are made on the internet. Last year, according to the police reports, there were around 4,908 reports which included social media sites. Social media has not only affected our has not only has affected our lifestyle. Today we go for a family function we prefer chatting on WhatsApp or Facebook rather than spending time with our family. Let me ask you a question. How many of your present here are ready to deactivate the WhatsApp account or Facebook account for a couple of days? Come on, raise your hand. Thank you. So long. Why? Why do we hesitate to do so? Is this so difficult? I don't think so. A blade can heal as well as kill. A blade in a surgeon's hand can heal. But the same blade in a murderer's hand can kill. Social media is just like a blade. It only depends on how we go to use it. I have made my choice. Now the choice is wrong. But do remember friends, use social media to improve your life and see that it does become your life. of sexual harassment uh, specifically. Most of us when it comes to sexual harassment we usually always uh, sort of narrow it down to only something like uh, molestation or rape. Okay, But uh, it's, uh, it's good that you guys should be aware of the fact that sexual harassment is anything which makes you uncomfortable. Any sort of information which is shared with you all uh, uh, on sexual themes, yeah, if it, if it makes any of you all uncomfortable you all should 
have the you know uh, you should speak out against it don't don't live in a fear that uh, people are going to judge you or anything last participant for today is manmeet temple from mustipen high secondary his topic is freedom of speech and expression George Washington, the first president of the United States of America, once quoted, "If freedom of speech and expression is taken away, then dumb and silent we will be led like a ship to the slaughter." A very good afternoon, honorable members of the jury, who are here to recognize, appreciate, and maximize the talent of oration, teachers, and my dear friends. Myself, Manmeet Timle. from Mushiban High Secondary School accepting the proud privilege to express my views on the topic freedom of speech and expression the constitution of india guarantees all its citizens some basic rights the most prominent being the freedom of speech and expression the preamble states we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india in your democratic socialist sovereign republic state and secure all its citizens the liberty of thought expression and belief power of speech is a most prominent tool used to move the masses used from times immemorable jesus christ sermon on the mount is a famous example even if one disregards the religious context of his speech and consider jesus to be a teacher on civil rights one can not disregard the fact that his words have continued to move millions and millions of people for the past 2000 years freedom of expression is a right it is the responsibility of every citizen it is one's inherent right to voice his or her opinion publicly but freedom of expression is not a license to abuse others democracy is have long grappled with the issue of setting the limits the dilemma dates back to ancient greece when socrates was prosecuted claiming that his teachings had corrupted the minds of the youth and had insulted the god in a modern world with a wide spread network of social media world turning into a global village and mobiles being loaded with new and new applications every day freedom of expression is being executed with no bounds every day in the newspaper varied news that like a teenager being held for uploading child porn on facebook where it is a sheer misuse of this constitutional right or on the other hand a blogger being killed for uploading secular idealism in a minority country or a thai man being jailed for 30 years only for insulting the the number of honor killings happening in our country or the recent terrorist attack that took place on the satirical magazine charlie hebdo in paris are examples where this right has not been rationally granted expression must be expressed with consciousness regarding time place and manner slander language intentional inflictions of emotional distress invasion of privacy and false advertising should not be encouraged freedom of expression is important it must be used to ridicule and criticize ideas but not for threatening or uh, disclosing military secrets in the end i will say free expression is a weapon with both the edge sharp while using this important tool we must use our emotional sharpness and advisory intelligence and respect the civil right as an individual human right thank you and all thank you manvi uh, with this we uh, finish with the presenting round uh, i would i would really like to thank you all especially the participants because uh, all of you all have expressed some uh, really bold ideas here and uh, i just have one request for all i hope all of you are stick by it yeah. i would like to request our judge mr jonathan rodrix to uh, express his views on the event
Alright. Uh, first of all, I'm really uh, happy that uh, one of the topics was freedom of expression because uh, it was a lot of pressure on me being the only judge here. You all know who's the culprit and who has uh, given the points. So whatever marks I've given is uh, my freedom of expression. So I hope you respect it. All right. So uh, yeah, it, I I was really really uh, uh, whatever you all came up and spoke here. Uh, almost nine of you all spoke on freedom of expression. There are people who spoke about uh, social media and also about uh, languages. So I just hope you'll go back out there and practice what you'll preach because uh, I know mo most many of you all. It, it takes a lot of courage to come up here and speak. It does. It does take a lot of courage. But I'll be really proud of you if you go out there and uh, you know. Practice what you preach. When it's time to fight for your freedom of expression, go out there. I'm not, I'm not saying go and fight on the street, but in your own personal battle, when there's someone who's curtailing your freedom of expression, I would be really proud of you if you, at that moment, you actually stand up for your freedom of expression. And whatever else you have said about, you know, languages, about, you know, about what we being a country that someone raised a very pertinent point at some time. I can't remember who it was, but it, uh, they said about, you know, whether this country needs. A, regional, a, a, a national language or not, and uh, about all the other regional languages that are getting a lot of attention, yet we need English because that's the only window to the rest of the world, and that is true because uh, I was in I was in Austria a month back for this competition in which I took part in, and there were people from the UK who speak English like a running train, all right, so fast, and then there are people from Lebanon and Turkey who know exactly the same words as the Britons the British, but uh, it's just that the accent is different and they speak a little slowly. So, you know, and uh, I was I was a person who was trying to mediate between both the teams. There was the, the UK people going on uh, full speed and the others are not even catching a word that they say, but they knew exactly the same words. So, you know, it's sometimes it's about, uh, a lot of you all had a lot of points out here, you know, so instead of sometimes rushing with your points, you don't have to, you have just four minutes. You can just choose three points and explain it nicely, you know, sometimes that's, that, that's more than enough to make a point clear. It's not about the competition, it's about anything else. Tomorrow you'll be uh, great public speakers. I'm, I'm sure all of you all have the confidence. Coming up here means a lot. I didn't have the confidence when I was in high secondary, but I got it a little later on. But uh, that's what I'm saying. So I, I hope you all will turn into some, uh, you never know, big politicians who also uh, you know, giving out huge speeches. But I want you to, more than preaching, go out there and practice what you all have all stood up for today. All right. Uh, I just want to take a small opportunity to also speak a little about what I do and uh, it's something that I'm going to be coming and talking to your principal and uh, father also soon. We're working on a project that's called uh, mediation, a campus mediation thing where we're going to teach students to, uh, you all spoke a lot about why is it, uh, conflicts can be solved. You don't have to have two different languages. Uh, you don't have to start arguing about which language has to be the national language of India. You know, these things can be solved by, you know, just discussing. So mediation is something where, you know, uh, I'm, I was very impressed with the number of uh, law topics you all brought up and a lot of citations and a lot of uh, case laws and great. I don't know whether you all knew that I was a law student or not, but that, that was awesome. Uh, so uh, what, what I do is something called as out of court settlement. So there are people who are taking 20 and 30 and 40 years fighting court cases. You know, you, you're dead but your grandchildren are still fighting your case uh, eight years from now and it's never going to resolve because it just goes on and on. So what we are looking at is something called as a mediation where, you know, suppose, um, what's your name? Ajay and Samuel. Ajay and Samuel have a problem. Uh, they are neighbors and Ajay keeps throwing garbage into Samuel's compound every morning. And he says, uh, so Samuel keeps saying, what, what's wrong with you? Why are you doing this? So he says, no, because you blast the music late at night, you know? And they keep, they keep this, this goes on and there's, there's fights and there are fists and then they sometimes get physical and this, this thing can go to court and go on for 10 years. This, this problem can you know, just continue. So what, what we are looking at is where Ajay and Samuel sit on opposite sides of the table and I sit between them and try and solve this case out. So this is something we are trying to uh, implement into the, into the society in India and Goa and we are going to start trying to this in colleges soon, in schools soon, trying to introduce this concept. And I hope uh, a principal and father also will help us get this thing down here soon. Uh, so once again, I was really, really impressed with uh, what I had to show. And I'm sure a lot of you have really, really strong opinions. I would love 
all of you to write to the newspapers. There is plenty of space for all of you all. Since I'm coming from a media background, uh, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a journalist. Sorry, I'm not a, I'm not a journalism student. I'm a journalist. Uh, but I had a passion to write. So I want you, to, I, all of you have a very really strong opinion. So I want you to write. There are a lot of columns where you can write. You know, uh, if you need to know how, if you're scared about getting to a paper about whether it's going to be published or not, don't be worried about that. I started out by writing a letter to the editor in Pune. And it worked out. It was just 35 words. And that, because that got published, I was inspired and I thought I could write. So it worked out and it's been pretty many years now. So I want you to start writing. I hope you start writing. Whatever you have said now, sit down, write it down in 400, 500 words and send it across. You can get my email ID from um, your teacher here and she will let you know uh, how to write it across. I will, I will make sure it's get, it gets published in at least one paper. But it has to be good, okay? So I'm going to put it through a lot of pressure and training sessions that till it gets published. So thanks a lot and uh, thank you so much for inviting me over here and for father and for the principal for having me over and uh, I really had a great time. I'm sorry it's going to be just a few winners but that's the competition. Uh, someone has to go ahead and someone has to lose. So yeah, I, I wouldn't say anyone is a loser, it's just that a few people scored a little bit more. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Jonathan. I now request our principal, Dr. Raju George, to say a few words. Thank you. Welcome to Dr. Bosco College. I am really grateful to you that you have come and participated in the competition. Do you have uh, some patience, uh, the patience to listen to me? You know, I do appreciate uh, uh, public speaking because all along my education I used to go for only one contest, that's the public speaking. It's an art. Just like a singer, you can mesmerize the audience and you yourself get intoxicated. No other liquor can give you that much of intoxication as the type of intoxication you get when you stand before an audience. But there are certain things you have to remember when you do that performance. I suppose you must have gone through in, in the history books about what Churchill spoke about his practice of giving public speeches. Have you ever come across that? You know, Churchill was one of the best orators of his time. The Prime Minister who never wanted to give freedom to India because he thought freedom would go to rogues. He was the most powerful orator in his time and you know, he never used to make extemporary speeches. It's an art. It has to be practiced and delivered. So before his performances, he used to stand before a huge mirror and then practice every bit of it. The body language, the voice modulation, renunciation, all those things. I think, I think Churchill still remains to be the best example to be followed. You know, the English language, when it comes to the English language, the most powerful weapon on earth. You know, back home, I come from Kerala. Back home in a district in Kerala, Malapuram, we have a particular type of knife, very sharp, long knife. One with one stab on it, it will go to the other side. Language is like that. It's a very powerful weapon. You can wound the person. The person will never forget one single word you use against the person. You can also convert the person to your side. And compared to other languages, I think English still holds to be the most powerful language in the, in the world. And that's one of the reasons why Englishmen could, I mean, uh, keep us under their colonial rule for such a long time. It's also a beautiful language. The way I, I pronounce the English language, you know, I have great pity to myself. That I am not a born speaker. I am not a native speaker. Not of the influence of the mother tongue is there in my speech. So when you speak for the speak, I mean, use the English language. You have to remember what uh, happens in the beautiful lady. I mean, a movie called the My Fair Lady. It's from Pygmalion. You know, My Fair Lady. The protagonist is the is a beautiful lady, charming lady. The other male protagonist wants to is madly in love with her. But then the way she pronounces English, no, she's not able to. She picks it up a little later. She pronounces English in a very poor manner, that this man gets nausea. That's a particular uh, dialogue in the, in, the, in the movie where he says, you look at her, a prisoner of the gutters, condemned by every syllable she utters. By right, she should be taken out and hung for the cold-blooded murder of the English language. So English, if you speak, you have to speak it with the correct pronunciation, correct accent and correct voice modulation, especially when you speak to the public audience. You know, I was really edified by the way you youngsters performed here. 
All of them were very good speeches. But then, with certain imperfections. I am going to point out those a few imperfections. You are trying to recollect the whole thing. And you should never give the impression to the audience that you are recollecting it. I remember there was a girl somewhere sitting there. Who, she was, to the last sentence, she was perfect. The voice modulation, the arguments, everything perfect. But the last moment, she gave the impression to the audience that she was trying to recollect. There ends the whole thing. I don't know whether she may be getting the first prize, I don't know, somebody else may be getting the first prize. Prize doesn't matter much. But then you will be again going for contest. If you don't get prize, you don't need to be pulled down by that, pulled down by that. You may be getting a prize in the next one. So, when you come with a prepared speech, you should never give the impression to the audience that you are performing by recollecting. At the same time, in a public uh, speech competition, you cannot be too personal. I remember some of you putting up with the very best arguments, but then it's, it becomes very personal. Because you, the, 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 when it is an art, you, know, you need to make it an art. You cannot make it very personal. It's not a kind of personal two by two conversation. It's that you are trying to get the audience converted to your fact. When it comes to, uh, th there are 10 marks are given for strength of argument. Now, when it comes to strength of argument, you should remember always the example of Mark Aaron's speech at the funeral of uh, Brutus. The whole crowd there is against Brutus. Mark Aaron in 5 minutes of time converts the whole audience to his side. The way he announced he, he he, I mean, what he called, addresses the audience, Romans, countrymen, and lovers. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. And what happens at the end of the speech? It's a terrific persuasive speech. And in every public speech, it has to be a persuasive speech. You have to convert the audience who are the opposite to you to your side. And in social media, some of you have done it. Freedom of expression, uh, some of you have done it. And when you speak about the audience, the content of the uh, topic carries a lot of weight. Uh, very many of you are very conscious about the the power of the social media. I have been talking about social media in the, the, uh, I mean, a, a few days back. It is the most powerful amplifier for Earth right now. Until now, it was film. Now, social media has taken over as the most powerful amplifier on Earth. And you know, we have been discussing it from the backdrop of an elite audience. For the elite audience, there is nothing wrong in using the social media. But then you should understand, there are so many anti-social elements making use of this powerful amplifier on earth. And they will bring calamity on earth unless people like us take up the take up on the grave responsibility of protecting social media as a powerful weapon for social communication. Otherwise, if it gets into the hand of I mean, anti-social elements, so it can come destroy the whole world. Originality and personal opinion, it has come. I am uh, really, uh, I do really appreciate the way you have done it because it's a prepared speech. You must also got the uh, help from the teachers and uh, your parents perhaps. Confidence and body language matters a lot. Some of you have failed in that because you get, uh, uh, you get affected by the audience. You should never. Because when you go and perform before an audience, no, that it is natural that you feel inhibited. But then you cannot afford to. You should always face the audience before you start, look into the eyes of the audience and look at the last person in the audience. Because the moment you look into the eyes of the people, no, all your fear is going to get out. If you don't do that, you will be afraid of the audience throughout your speech and it will be written on your body. The body language matters a lot. You know, as principal here, no, so many students and teachers come to me, including the manager, I always read their body language much more than what they say. Because the body language is the most I mean, most beautiful and powerful revelation of the person. Don't believe the words of a person, but look at the body language of the person. So if you give the impression to the audience that you are afraid of the audience, you have to feel that you are an authority in the subject and the audience know nothing about it for much little, much less than you know. And when you speak now, you should also see that the words are gone to the last person in the audience. You are talking to the last person in the audience. Every syllable should be clear. Sometimes in some of you, the participants, and I found that Sometimes you change, the, you have a voice modulation the way that the last two, three words are swallowed up. So it's difficult for the audience to pick up the meaning of what you really say. Because you have learned it for maybe 150 times. But the audience hear whatever you say for just for once. So you have to be clear about each and every word you speak. And whenever you want to insist upon a particular point, see that you are deliberately slow. And of course, it, uh, 
uh, I mean, uh, depending upon the context and the and the emphasis you want to give on various uh, points and all, you have to moderate your speech. And some of you are having very high pitch voice, which might destroy your career. See that your voice is modulated in such a way that it's going to be pleasant to the ears of the people. Do my voice look pleasant here? Sound pleasant? <laughs> you are trying to praise me. Most of you, <laughs> you know, it has to be, even if you, are, you have a very bad voice, but you still, by training, can improve upon your voice. Voice is very important. If your voice is arrogant to listen to, arrogant, or if your voice is unpleasant, people may not like it. Because it's an art. So in the art, you are supposed to be perfect in every, every way possible. So please concentrate on the way you perform. If you have learned it by heart, or if you have prepared notes with you, don't give the impression to the audience that you are prepared. Make, make it, uh, give it the impression that it's an extemporary speech. You can't do that. And you know, if at all you have forgotten something, like that, you, know, you make some kind of body language, it kills the whole thing. If you have forgotten, okay, just wait for, just pause and wait and recollect. You don't need to give the impression to people that you are afraid, you are, you are feeling bad that you have forgotten it. Anybody can forget things. Especially when you have a lot of material new with, and then suddenly you have been distracted by a particular person in the audience, you might forget everything. Therefore, people like, old people like us, like me, you know, I always write down in next day. It's the only time I have spoken in this spontaneously. So, thank you very much. You have done well and the judge has taken a lot of trouble to I mean, uh, judge your speech and I am sure he would be the right person to do that because he's a person who moves about in the media. No? Uh, he must have come across lots of people. And the, the uh, the colleagues here in the Department of Mass Media, we have a studio here. We also have our own channel, educational channel. And if any one of you or any one of your friends would like to take a media studies next year or after your completion of plus two, you can very well come to Don Bosco. But the manager is here, a very magnetic person. He will talk about the importance of coming to Don Bosco. You know, we, this is a private self-financing institution. Therefore, we have a magnetic way of taking very ordinary students and sending them out as extraordinary students. All the cream students go to government aided colleges. There we need to pay only less money. But here we go after the marginalized people with regard to academics. We take them and by the time they pass out the Don Bosco, they become extraordinary students. And media, I have been talking with your, the, the Honorable Judge, media is the fastest growing area of employment. Very many students are not, are not aware of it. We have two programs here, mass media and uh, social work, which do not have enough number of students coming in. Mostly because people are not aware of it. Everybody runs after my community, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, what do you call management studies and uh, uh, computer science. Very few people opt for media. Media is a very wide, has a very wide range of employment opportunities and it will be growing fast and fast. Fastest growing area. If you have some talent in you or in your friends, we suggest them to come to Don Bosco. We will come to them. Thank you. Okay, we are finally coming to the most awaited moment for all the participants. So, uh, it was a really close call, okay? Uh, a, a difference of one or two points in some cases. So, uh, I'll start with the third place first. The third place goes to Prajwal Desai from Mushtipan High Secondary School. <laughs> Father Wilfred Fernandez to please give away the prize. The second place goes to Miss Gayatri Gauss from GVM Dakash High Secondary School. goes to Samuel Moses Avertino Carrera from Madagascar High Secondary School. This is Lata Rajiv, uh, faculty of the Mass Media Department, will give the vote of thanks. Good afternoon to everyone. I take this opportunity to propose the vote of thanks. I express sincere gratitude to Mr. Jonathan Fernand. Roderick, sorry, who kindly agreed to judge today's competition 
despite his busy schedule. I would like to thank our manager, Father Wilfred Fernandez, and our principal, Dr. Rajiv George, for their continued support and encouragement in all our programs. A special thank you to all our participants. It has been an interesting and enlightening experience to listen to all of you enthuse on different topics today. It would be wonderful to have you in the portals of our college as future students in the Department of Mass Media where we encourage the students to unleash their creativity and explore their potential. I would like to thank the staff members who have put in the efforts to organize today's program and make it a reality. Once again, thank you everyone and God bless you.